Welcome to Garden of Insight. My name's Nicola. If you are here for the first time, welcome. Thanks for joining me. Just so that you know, you can treat this channel as a huge pick a card and be drawn to whatever question at any given time, whenever you feel drawn to check in. But you can always jump ahead to the quick pick if you don't want to sit through the intro and the detailed pick. It's all in the description box along with other information. If you are returning, welcome back. Thanks for joining me again. So today's question is, who is intrigued by you and what are their intentions, if any? So who is intrigued by you and what are their intentions, if any? And I was also getting the word um, inspired, but yeah, maybe some people are intrigued by you, but they're not inspired. Maybe some people are inspired by you, but they don't want to admit it to themselves. But spirit was leaning me more towards the word intrigued. So pile one, we have the medallion. And the crystal that I was drawn to is the smoky quartz. Pile two, we have the self. And the crystal that I was drawn to is the tiger's eye. And pile three, we have the lover. And the crystal that I was drawn to is the snowflake obsidian. Now, if you need a little bit more time, just sit through the quick pick and then we will dive in. Hi, pal one. So you chose the medallion with the smoky quartz. We're going to lay out all the oracle and affirmation cards and then partway through we'll start to unpack with some tarot cards as well. So we also have the underworld. We have the dragonfly. It wanted to come out in reverse. The owl. Drifting. It takes a lot of hard work not to be yourself. Waterfall, we see all the water. Peace, even more water. Isle of Life. Ambition, set your sights beyond the horizon. I've got, I've already, and I've pulled more cards than I usually do as well, I think. Temporary situation, tent and owl again so it's going to be difficult to get all the cards on the table today um right where do i start because i could flip things around a little bit but i actually feel like um in a sense i guess where if we're asking who is intrigued by you i feel like this would be a person that would like to reach out to you or like to claim you um so whether you've had an interaction with them that's been, you know, maybe you're just kind of a mentor and you offer guidance and someone wants to reach out to you for help because of who you are and how you show up, that they don't know how to or they don't think that they can. Or there's some kind of, I just heard claws. So for some pe person, there might even be some kind of clause in a contract or an agreement or verbal or written around the fact that they're not able to reach out to you so for example let's say someone is going through a dark period but they're part of a group or culture where like Scientology for example you're a psychologist and it's like they're not allowed to reach out to you even though they might be watching you on Instagram or watching some of the work that you've done or a friend might have recommended them. I know that's a really weird, random thing to say, but it could also be that you are 
giving wise counsel as a spiritual leader, but they follow a particular religion or vice versa. Um, it could be that they're part of a group or a culture or a system or a structure where for some reason they can't reach out to you or work in your company or train under you. Yeah, but I also feel like if it's friendship or love, I feel like there's something around like social norms and, and convention but it might not even be convention. Maybe they're more hippy dippy, you know, and you're really conventional or maybe you're more alternative and they're super conventional. Because what was actually coming through in a really, really weird way is I don't watch reality shows anymore, but there is one show that I kind of started watching earlier this year or late last year called Below Deck. And it's a reality show about yachties and, um, the season that I'm watching now, I think it's the most recent season, um, there's a girl called Barbie who's a Jewish girl from a very upper class conventional American family. Sorry if this is going, this, this is part of a story so you have to go with the channeled messages if you like this kind of interpretation. And she even though her mum is a bit unconventional because I think she's like a sex therapist or something and her dad, I don't know, is a businessman. She's really afraid of the fact that she's drawn to this really uh, Jack the Lad type of Irish lad but she ends up falling from a little bit and over time the things that she used to be more worried about, which are still there, but the things that she used to be more worried about worried about she's not that worried about now she's more worried about things that are like she used to just be worried that they're from different kind of backgrounds and that it might not fit in and that her parents might not approve but now she's more bothered about the fact that oh well you know as long as you behave well type of thing so I don't know if that's like a bit of a hurdle to somebody reaching out or somebody feeling like they can claim you or somebody feeling like they can sh tell you your value or acknowledge your value. I am getting a bit like a diamond in the rough. Again, it's like maybe you're from a different background, not necessarily a rough background, but maybe it could be perceived that way by pretentious people or people that have never lived a certain type of life. And it's giving me this vibe of like Barbie and even though he kind of, because I got the term fits the bill, it's like even though in some way he fits the bill for her, this Jack the Lad Irish guy, he doesn't fit the bill for what the, her parents would expect, especially her father. But below deck and deep down, right, and I'm, I'll come to the darker energies of this, deep down, this is a person who wants to reach out and claim you but they feel either all tied up in knots or like they can't that it just can't it's like it can't pass it's like like there's something going on within that person that needs like rectifying but it is tied to or links back to something that this person's tied to male or female and it's almost like that again reaching out this person wouldn't just be wanting to reach out and claim you in a really superficial way this person would be wanting to give you this love this they'd, they'd want it to be free-flowing they'd want to pour into you they'd want to nurture and or protect you and but yeah I feel like it doesn't feel like they they feel like they can establish something that could stand the test of time but it's but it's more like the same way she's saying oh god knows what's going to happen when we get off the boat and we're in the real world it that's what it feels like so you might have interacted with this person but it they might not have ever really made you feel like they're committed or you might have had a sense that there's a person that wants you in some way or wants to be connected to you but they are in denial they're in denial and it's tied back to some kind of convention, social norm, tradition or expectation of a group, of a community, of a family, of a tribe. And it could be where that person comes from or 
what the beliefs that they're tied to. And what I was getting with the drifting and the fact that there's the waterfall, as much as a person might want to pour into you, it feels like this is someone who just goes along with other people. Again, they might do it with a struggle, right? They might really feel like, oh, I, you know, I, I really, really want to try and express myself to this person or I really, really want to show up for this person. Or when I can, maybe when these other people aren't around, I am going to express love. But you can sense that it's stifled or it's held back or it's not as free flowing as it could be. And you might feel a drift in this relationship or dynamic or connection with this person because they choose and it is a choice to stay in denial and go along with other people. But they're being encouraged to wise up, right? They're being in good advice from a wise person, whether that is you, you know, the way that, again, the way that you handle yourself, the way that you take care of yourself, the way that you show up in the world, it takes a, a lot of hard work not to be yourself. I feel like, you know, there's that quote about the, the pain of staying tightly in the bud as opposed to the pain of, opening yourself up I feel like if you've been through that part of what might be intriguing about you and inspiring is that you're just who you are right and you might come across as if you're completely at peace with yourself whether you are or not that's how you come across but even if you are it's not that it hasn't been hard work to get to that place where you really feel like there's no need to worry when it comes to stepping out as you really are and being wise enough to listen to your heart because I'm seeing the heart I always see the heart in the owl's face to listen to your heart and recognize that yeah not everybody's going to see you the way that you see yourself or not everybody's going to see you the same way not everybody's going to want the same things as you but it would be unwise not to nurture yourself it would be unwise not to set your sights on what's true for you and that might be part of what's intriguing about you and inspiring. But I feel like this smoky quartz is highlighting that sense of there is a there is difficulty here around either the fact that a person has these feelings for you, but they don't feel like they can take action or this person is taking action with you. But something that's held back in that emotional expression is this hesitation because maybe when they're with you, they deny that it's a problem to you and to themselves. Or when they express, they deny that it's a problem. But deep down, they know that it is or they feel that it is. Intellectually, they feel that it is. And, and I do feel like there is love because you've got blue and green, blue and green, blue and green, right? So I do feel like there's there's a loving expression or there's a, de a desire to express something loving or there's love felt and the struggle around expressing it is that intellectual energy of like we can't really both jump in this boat and go very far but again it's that societal norms convention or yeah now, I don't want to go too hard on this person because, again, I feel like this underworld is actually coming from other people, not them. They're trapped in it like a diamond in the rough. Again, I feel like, you know, they might come across like the medallion and see you as the diamond in the rough. And there might be expectations for them to claim this shiny, sparkly prize that looks a, say, a certain way in the way that other people expect it to represent value but this person recognizes as some what what makes you valuable is that you've managed to be who you really are in spite of you know maybe quite uh not oppressive but messy complicated energies and thoughts and feelings of other people you've you've chosen to kind of remember who you are in there and keep set your sights beyond the horizon but I also feel like in the group or community that this person is in, and we've got Ant on the bottom of the deck here, and we've got this green man energy, male or female, because we've also got the earth mother. So again, a lot of earthy energy, right? This person might feel quite small or lost in the shrubbery or the 
you know, all entangled and, and, and like they're not really seen. So that's why I don't want to go too hard on this person because I actually think this person might be quite a sensitive soul, but I do feel like they need to get a spine. And, and I, that's why I feel like I needed to preface, like, I don't want to be too hard on this person, but they do. They need to get a spine. They need to have a backbone. This ant, the 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 weight that this ant can ca carry compared to its own weight without it being a burden or seemingly not be a burden is immense. So I'm not saying that this person doesn't have strength or courage or doesn't work hard or hasn't achieved a lot or isn't successful in their own right, but there's a sensitivity here around look they're becoming it says avoid harsh relationships environments and situations it's getting harder to feel lost in amongst the crowd because the crowd doesn't fit but this person would feel i don't know like they're not strong enough to step out of this ant's nest or they're not and now i'm seeing the ant from this deck you know from kim crans where there's all these ants coming at something that's what it feels like would be tricky. And maybe this person would have to deal with like trouble and accusations. And remember I said a clause, involvement with the law, like a contract, a business contract, a, something that they've signed like this bloody multiple years contract that Scientology sign or, um, yeah, like I said, a marriage contract or an agreement around assets or children or just the principles and rules that you're supposed to obey within a religion. Um, or there's that, that fear of it. There might be, if I go my own way or I move towards this person, I might, there might be not necessarily accusations, but some maybe accusations that have to be dealt with by the law or just trouble where someone's like putting, you know, I'm getting like, um, slamming yeah like slamming a fist on the table as opposed to a gavel it feels like and I, I feel like someone's afraid of dealing with that even though they're being guided to stop going along with others and wise up because deep down they're in denial and part of how part of how this person can have a strong spine and and take action because that water alchemical symbol for water should be the other way around and now it's in the action energy and the um intellectual thinking space is in reverse which is earthing like it's grounding something so there's this sense of like in order to have this strong spine and take action and integrity to ground something that the, per the person really wants with you or from you or to give to you or all of the above like, I, I actually feel like this person would be like, if you were saying this to this person, you were like, I know how you feel. or I know what you want. or I know we could make a go of this. Or, you know, you keep saying you're interested in me or you keep saying you love me or, you know, you're in and out or, you know, you've held yourself back and never expressed yourself. But I know X, Y, Z. I feel like this person would be like easy, like easy as if you're going hard on them. But this is a person who chooses to stay in denial because it's more comfortable because what I was trying to say is to have this spine and take action in integrity and ground something and feel more stable in where they're at and what they're giving to and what they're receiving as opposed to a drift and just going with the flow and going along with what other people say and feeling I mean like there's nobody in that boat and it, I don't know if there's anybody in that tent so this person has to humble themselves and that may tie to power too i'm not sure but it it is my birthright to live fully and freely i give to life exactly what i want life to give to me i am glad to be alive i love life i don't feel like this person loves where they are it might be because they don't love that they can't reach out to you it might be that they don't love that they can't have you see the truth of how they really feel? It might be that they just don't love getting tied up in knots over multiple things in their life that they feel they have to conform to when they might have their sights beyond the horizon of the limitations and the social norms and the traditions and expectations of what other people have placed them. But in this 
in this energy, that sunflower, I feel, would be you. This person is drawn to you and wants to work with you. And again, I do feel they want to give as much as they want to receive. But again, it's almost like that's because they know giving to you would give them something. But they can't fully give to you because something's not there. They're wrapped up or linked with something that has them tied up in knots and it's not working properly. It that's that's meaning that they can't function properly. Now, just to highlight that a little bit more, um, if, if we do have the crocodile, and again, it, uh, this person does keep their eye on you, but I think that they're really, really afraid to say a word. Like then this may be someone again with the water who's never shared their feelings, but it equally could be someone who you've explored your emotions with swimming around, but it's all again, the same as underworld It's all underground. It's all underwater. It's all hidden. There's no way that they would volunteer that information to other people about you, or there's no way that they would volunteer that information to you, even though you may sense it or know it. And again, with the eggs and bacon, it feels like this could be... Because, again, think about some religions you're not allowed to eat pork or if you're veg... You know, there are rules around, well, this I've, I've, I'm now, you know, the whole family's... I'm not saying it's this. It's an example. But, yeah, certain religions you're not allowed to eat pork. And if you've grown up a vegetarian, then you're not allowed to eat bacon or eggs. So it feels like... There is a strong element of, I literally can't do that. I, I, I can't do that, even though I want to. But this is someone who would like, you know, go and get a bacon and egg muffin <laughs> on the way to work and say that they just got like a hash brown or something and chomp on it in secret so again this could be something secret and if it if it's like a third party damn i'm not really getting that but for some of you maybe it's someone you know telling you how they feel and making promises but they still can't fully give to you because they're in another dynamic and they're you know chomping down on you and it's tasty underground under under you know where other people can't see and it's like wise up like if you have to live like this regardless of whether it's with me or with other people like this is not this is you're suppressing something you're, den you're denying yourself something that you actually want and that seems to be good for this person right it seems to be good for this person and with this card as well believe in your otherworldly, because we've got underworld, believe in your otherworldly beauty, dance with the waves and drink in the sunshine. Yes, there might be some shadow work around this that a person has to confront. They're afraid that they'll be judged because they think, but I don't think, it, again, I don't think it's their shadow work. I think it's more other people, which again, it could be a third party or a person where if they were to express what they want, which is natural and we all have our own tastes and desires and wants and needs that it's like they can't open up and share that because someone would say that that's evil like really like someone would say that that is so bad that this person needs to be like cast out or something and maybe from a family you know maybe it would it would disturb the peace within a family or a tribe with the ants nest and the troubles and accusation and the law Maybe someone would lose out on something by, you know. But again, that's just temporary. If people can't move through temporary discomfort in order to think about long-term goals and on what you can achieve over the span of your life as opposed to thinking about what might happen over the next two weeks or two months or two years or 20 years, it's like, well, especially if you're not taking on board karma, because that eventually, those those style of um, water hoses, I couldn't think of the word then, those older styles that you have to unravel yourself that you can't just pull, they always kink, right? And and then they get so kinked that no matter how, how much you straighten it out, it always kinks in the same place again. And 
that then weakens it and often then it breaks or tears and then the water's coming out in a different place and every time you're trying to spray the plants it's splashing all over your feet so it just feels like that the longer that a person doesn't straighten themselves out yeah straighten themselves out and straighten this out with other people and with you or you know or just with other people so they can straighten things out with other people so they can come at you more directly and with integrity or straighten things out with you by saying I am going to go back and deal with this for myself right because I want you because I want to work with you because I, I value you it feels like the longer you leave it, the harder it becomes. And then going back and straightening this out, it'll always be a kink. It'll always be a, a chink in the chain or whatever that saying is. Because cause even if you, you know, even if it's a person who thinks, oh my God, I'm going to have to like distance myself from all these traditions and conventions or, I'm, or they've pushed me out now because they don't accept who I really want to be. And I got sick of working so hard to not be myself that I decided I'm just going to go for it. Like, I mean, it might be that they leave it too long with you or it might just be that, yeah, again, whatever they're doing and wherever they're moving, so something about it making way, like a person may then choose to go out and make waves in the world with you and in other areas of their life. Like I said, this beyond the horizon might include you and other things that I always feel like there's something that will restrict them. And again, it could be, it's like a web of lies, isn't it? But in this case, it's almost like agreements. The more agreements you make over time, the harder it is to unravel yourself from it. And I feel like, you know, this this person keeps agreeing to go along with other people and they're not wising up to the fact that that's reinforcing what they're already in as opposed to gradually releasing themselves from it. Very interesting reading. So we're going to have to move things around a little bit to give us some space. Let's just let's just pop them there because I because I get I do that's matching energy and that I think this I I I want to say this is temporary as if like this person will eventually feel compelled to get themselves out of this blocked energy where they don't feel like they can fully transition into who they want to be. But whether they do that or not, I'm not 100% sure. So we're going to use the Wildwood Tarot. Yoke as well. Whatever this person is yoked to, in, and again, it's just, it feels like Either they don't feel like they can get out of it or they just haven't confronted that idea of I actually don't have to do this. You know, I actually don't have to agree. I actually can go my own way. I should go with the flow in terms of where I feel drawn. A relationship should be more free flowing. They shouldn't be restrictive. What's the point in what's the point in being here if we don't love any aspect of it because every area of our life feels restricted by other people's expectations okay so now spirit's saying this third party person because again i felt like the underworld was more like the conventional norm traditions expectations whether it's parents religion a partner whatever for some there is a dangerous someone has some kind of dangerous power and I just can't get away from this clause. Because again, I don't know whether it would lead to legal issues or whether there is a contract. But it feels like, and it feels like more like trouble than accusations. Although someone might accuse a person of being evil by not following the rules or being um, a lost soul or being, um, again, even if it's just divorce, it could be someone's struck from a space, you know, like removed from a space or, you know, shunned from a group because in their mind they're accusing them of doing something like sinful. But I actually feel like the power that that has over a person is dangerous because it's, it's forcing them to deny who they really are. And that can put you in an incredibly dark place where you feel adrift and like nobody understands you and 
Yeah, you got the stag upside down. That's like the strength card upside down. Holy moly. Now, is this person just being trodden down? Or are they, is it really, again, spirit, I'm hearing spirit, I'm hearing this person's kind of sensitivity coming through and saying, go easy, easy. But I don't feel like this message is insensitive at all. I just feel like the reality of the truth that this, this message is way less harsh than the harsh relationship environment situation that a person's in. But being told it or it resonating, because maybe you're the person who wants to reach out to this treasure, you know, and I'm picking up on you going easy. <laughs> but this message, love, is way less harsh than the actual it, it's just draw it's just shining a light on that energy that you're already in as opposed to just a harsh message about you know you don't have a backbone or grow a spine it's saying think about what's clouding your judgment here and what it really means to feel like you don't have the strength to go through a transition and why that is it's it's a it's who you feel it's again i'm going to talk about it like it's the other person not you now but that represents the that's the underworld right this is heaven hell and a new caught in the middle there's different ways of looking at that but that's all about integration and kind of coming into self and maybe there's something that you can garner more about this person from pal two but only go there if you were already drawn to pal two because if you're drawn to pal two maybe there's something more promising to share about this dynamic or not i don't know we'll see this person's frustrated this person's frustrated i'm hearing with themselves this person's frustrated with themselves because they've got a tool right to hack their way through whatever they feel like is restricting them and i'm hearing i can't hack it i can't hack it and this upside down ten of arrows instruction seriously they're going in the wrong direction based on how they've been instructed the ten of arrows is awful that's betrayal right that's feeling sabotaged and maybe even ganged up on but in this case I feel like even if there's a really beautiful like wise counsellor like guardian guide leader teacher spiritual leader parent whatever that is trying to pass on their wisdom and they've got the best of intentions that feels like it is instructing this person to shoot for something that either they don't want to shoot for because it's not for them or it's just going back around to something that is not fulfilling this person. And why I feel like this is someone who's really frustrated with themselves. And I'm gritting my teeth as I say it. Because they know that this person knows it. They're wise enough to know this now. So, again, the same way it says going along with people, wise up. In order to wise up, this person has to stop going along with the wisdom that might have been passed down to them through social norms, family conditioning, a religious set of principles or rules, an idea of what we should all aim for, the type of partner we should aim for, the type of lifestyle we should aim for. And this, there's a reality here now where I feel like this person knows what's right behind them is a, a, a chink in the chain or whatever you call it. It's that this person can't hack it. They can't hack what they're doing and where they're at and with, and with pulling themselves back, I'm hearing. But they can't hack or they feel that they can't hack, you know, hacking through the underworld to actually get to where they want to go, which is beyond the horizon. Beyond the horizon that this person is saying, shoot for here. And this person's like, I want to go way the F over there. Or this person's saying, shoot you know, shoot over here where we all are doing what we're doing. And this person's like, you know, 
I actually, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I, I want to be careful here again. I think that's why this sensitivity keeps coming in. There's an energy that keeps saying to me, go easy on me, like go easy on me. This person might be at rock bottom because I'm seeing this arrow, which is a sword or a blade or a knife. And, I'm, and, and again, this axe. This feels like this person is so frustrated with themselves that if they don't untangle themselves from something and choose to aim towards something that really feels like it's for them and, and, and choose peace, they have to choose peace. It's like they're trying to maintain peace and the status quo, but it's causing them so much turmoil, emotional turmoil. And they need to choose peace and, and deal with the consequences of what if, if they don't. I'm a bit, I'm, I, there is a concern there. There is a concern of where this person might get to mentally because one, two, three, four, five, six, six, seven, nine. That's that nightmares and waking up in turmoil. And no matter which way this person's aiming, they're going to go through that. But I feel like if they keep going back on themselves and backstabbing themselves and betraying themselves, I feel like they might get to a point of, you know, no return. So as much as I feel that I have been sensitive with the message and hopefully that brings about that sense of empathy and compassion with you or if that if you are the person watching and you feel like Nicola's calling me out here saying I'm not going for what I want, you know, that there is a sensitivity there to it. But if you do deal with this person, I'm not saying like sugarcoat your feelings or don't communicate your truth or, you know, just make excuses for them. But I am saying this is tricky because I don't know what it's like to feel so limited and restricted by a set of, you know, I know what it feels like to have society expecting things of me. And I've been through the underworld and I'm sure I'll go through it again. But I've never felt so much pressure from a person or a group that's made me feel like, I mean, I, I've, I've felt like the black sheep of the family. I felt like I might be ostracized. I felt like I might not get ahead in the way that other people might. But I still wouldn't say that I felt like, you know, I'm damned to hell or, you know, my whole family are going to shun me or, yeah. So I can't say that that's, that should come easy. So I, I feel like, yeah, look. So I feel like maybe that's something you should have in mind. It might feel like an injustice to you, you know, that this person can't, you know, see clearly and balance things out. And what did I say? Um, straighten things out with you and other people. But it, I don't think it's because they don't see it. I think it's just that they're afraid. Look, they, they, they know what arrow they want, but if they chose the arrow and picked up that arrow and shot in that direction, there's, there's a consequence that may not be easy to deal with, right? So, but they they do want that, right? And, and it's on fire. This arrow that they want to choose, which I feel like is connected to you, is on fire. It's burning them up. But it's at like a, it's just a bit stuck, right? And again, I think that's what's intriguing about you. You do. You just go out, your, your spark of life, your, your, that spark within you is expressed externally because you've recognised it takes a lot of hard work not to be yourself. And I don't think you're in that position. I think you're wise enough not to be in that position or you've moved through being in that position. And I feel like you can see that this person is in that position and that ultimately betraying you or betraying this connection or betraying this opportunity or betraying their feelings is them betraying themselves as much as it is maybe you feel like they don't have the strength to do what's right for you as well. But I do feel like, bear in mind, there might be love between them and this person. There might this, they, they might have been helped a lot through their life by this group. You know, they might be concerned that this person's coming to the end of their life. They might be 
fear that this person will take something away from them or cause them problems further down the line or bring you problems. Remember I said that this third party or person might have some dangerous power over them and, and there's some kind of clause. It might be like if you shoot in that direction, I'm going to not just come at you and take X, Y, Z away or cause this problem or that problem. I'm going to go at what this person's shooting for. I'm going to go at the way this person is showing up in the world. I'm going to disturb their peace, which is a bit rotten, right? And you've got the six of arrows transition. That's what that dragonfly gives me the vibes of. So if there is anything that's shrouded in mystery or that's being kept underground, I'm not saying that you have to continue participating in it below deck. You know, that's like the shadow of the swan, right? And the swan is like the lover's card. I'm not saying that you should do that with a partner or a friend or a potential partner. But I'm just saying, you know, consider whatever you choose to do, consider that them coming in and you having some kind of celebration together might not be as easy either just because you can't understand what it is that they're tied to in the same way that they do you don't know as much about it or you're not the one that's tied to it so your feelings are not wrapped up in it or maybe you just don't understand what it feels like to not have that courage and again to be sensitive not to say that you're really ballsy and this person's a coward but there is a shift there is a difference there you know who you are and you know what you want. And even if you don't, you take the chance. This person either doesn't know who they are or what they want or they are they so conflicted in who they are and who they're meant to be and what they want and what they feel like they're allowed to have that they allow other people to squash them. And in turn, that might have squashed you or squashed this dynamic or squashed this relationship. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay with the Wildwood Tarot and just get two more. Yeah, I, I honestly, I feel like it, it could quite easily be dealt with. Again, there might be a jealous person that might come after them or you or this person might be battling with jealousy over the fact that you are intriguing and they want to shoot towards you, but they're in pain because they can't and maybe it's not jealousy, it's envy. I wish I could be like him or her. I wish I could live my life the way he or she does. I wish I had the courage to burn away what causes pain and trouble within me and make a choice to do what's right for myself and others, even if everybody can't see it. Or they could be, like I say, like another person. And I feel like it could just as easily lead to, let's deal with this pain and straighten things out and see that the heart is still intact or this will all end in tears this will all end in pain this will all end in drama yeah and then you've got the great bear upside down what did i say this is judgment yeah, i guess that depends right the whether it ends in deal straightening things out and recognizing there's a full heart here and you can burn away whatever's got in the way of it but there has to be a deliberate, like, I'm going to shoot and deal with the consequences. But if that's not done because a person doesn't transition and find the courage to face the judgment of other people that might not be for where they're going, that might actually be trying to push them back or they're afraid that there'll be some kind of backlash if they move in a different direction. And there's something drawing someone's attention, again, towards you or what you represent with these kind of aurora. Is it aurora? Yeah. Northern lights or aurora? Anyway. Um, not doing that, that person stays in pain. They might not cause you the pain that they fear that they'll cause you, but they'll stay in pain. Facing the judgment of other people might cause them more pain temporarily and might cause you pain temporarily but longer term i think it will resolve a lot of issues for you for them and between you and then i feel like it would be like that's in the past and this wise judgment by someone wising up 
allows this person to fully transition, right? It allows them to feel like they've stood in their power, right? They've claimed what they want. They're no longer frustrated with themselves. They're no longer at rock bottom because they feel like they're betraying who they really are and what they really want. And this temporary situation is healed by being able to take action in integrity. And look who you've got on the bottom, the green woman. <laughs> so I, I don't know whether this is a man or a woman towards a man or a woman, but this is a synergy, I would say. This is a synergy between people. Let's say that whatever the dynamic, this is a synergy between this person and you by them synergizing and alchemizing what it is that they want to ground and what it is that they want to grow and overcoming this as well. This energy looks scared and timid and afraid to jump. So even if it's not them jumping towards you, even if it's just this person afraid to dive into their feelings or afraid to jump into something new, even though it will lead to something that feels better for them, male or female, this might be something that's holding that power over them. Mm. And again, it feels like this person could be judged by jumping into something that would be considered bad, wrong. Like again, that's not, that's, you, that's not the right thing to do. So let me just look at one thing because I'm not going to read into it too much, but the fact is, I just split the deck and I got this, right, 11, the Woodward. And I was like, hang on a minute, is that the strength card? Because I was like, intuitively, I was getting the stag is the strength card. And I feel like traditionally, number eight is the strength card. But then when I split the deck and I saw 11, I was like, hang on, is that the strength card? And that's something else. So I have to highlight this, particularly in terms of the injustice as well. I'm not... I think they've swapped it round in the Wildwood because the A, the stag in this one seems to be talking more about justice, like the justice card, and 11, the Woodward, seems to be talking more about strength. This says, the classical tarot image of strength is a beautiful mature woman controlling or holding a lion, but it says the Woodward, an ancient guardian of the Wildwood, symbolises the inner power that comes from facing fear and understanding the nature of darkness. So even though I intuitively drew, that made me think strength for obvious reasons, I ended up splitting the deck and actually looking at the strength card in this deck. And even though I was talking about justice and some kind of clause and some kind of imbalance in terms of what's fair on other people and self, the card that I already had that I was reading as the strength card, I think is the justice card because it says the justice it dispenses is long lasting in its final conclusion. Universal balance, divine intervention, universal law. But it says on a personal level, some kind of adjustment or interaction has taken place. The key word here is resp responsibility, personal responsibility. We must, as individuals, constantly observe the rules and regulations of society, and these can fluctuate as the views and knowledge of civilization changes. This is a time to welcome the justice that has arrived with the coming of spring and the fire of creation. Facing the coming season with honesty and integrity and trust to right and appropriate action. That's what this person isn't doing it and they know it and they're not doing it because they lack the strength. But why do they lack the strength? Because of these rules and regulations, whatever they are for this particular person. And then the fact that I've pulled this, which ordinarily 11 would be justice, but in this deck, it is the strength card. So you've got like a double up and a back and forth of strength and justice. This is highlighting through adversity or the process of rebalancing in life, we find the courage within ourselves that flows, flows from an unknown source. Sometimes that courage has to do with facing an unavoidable truth or dealing with a person or problem that no amount of physical confrontation will resolve. The Woodward strength. So sometimes when faced with a challenge, we must find our own inner backstop or backbone. 
the point from which we will not retreat or from which we can move forward with quiet confidence towards this peace. Calm, that resolute strength, the noble instinct of protection, mercy. And it says, I am not a victim, treat me with respect, do not mistake my passivity for weakness. And it's like this person has to tell themselves that because other people are mistaking their passivity with weakness um, because they choose to go along with things, that they're stronger than they think they are. They just need to believe it. And then they wouldn't need to whisper when I'm sharing this message, go easy on me, because they'd realise actually the person that's not going easy on them is themselves because of their fear of this group not going easy on them. It's not other people that see the truth of what it is they're not doing and why they're not doing it. Does that make sense? So this was a really long reading, but I hope that it yeah gave you clarity over what you need. Don't forget the prize draw and please do like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Hi, pal two. So you chose the self with the tiger's eye. So we'll lay out the oracle and affirmation cards and see whatever tarot I'm drawn to throughout the reading. So we've also got the empty room, which wanted to come out in reverse. We have the horse, we have the earthworm which wanted to come out in reverse, we have the strength card, we have this, sometimes no matter where you sit you're going to get wet and I'm hearing you can lead a horse to water but you can't make it drink. We have the wolf instinct and golden opportunity. Important doors are opening for you right now. Walk through them. We have, I accept all the parts of myself. Change, know when to move to a new shell, especially if yours no longer fits. Candle, you'll be shown the way. And key, successful outcome to your problem or problems. So I don't want to mention it too much, but if you were drawn to self, and the medallion or you were drawn to medallion but also the self this strength might tie to the energy that a person has been in in terms of the fact that they are intrigued by you and they have the intention it's almost like in pile one there wasn't much intention there whereas in this one there is there might be a shift this person before might have been able to lie to themselves and deny something but now I feel like the space that, that they're in, if it ties to pal one, is so ugh, just not a good place that they might be starting to wrap their head around the fact that they might have to have a new beginning and go at things in a different way. And they might be trying to build up the strength and stamina to make a change, to come out of their shell, to come out of the shadows, to, to end something and leave something in order to explore something new with you and again that doesn't have to be and you know it could be disconnecting from a relationship to come back home to family right it doesn't have to be leaving a family or a relationship to align with a new partner but as a fresh energy the main message that I was getting through here is that this person is a watcher they are a watcher they are watching from the shadows they are watching behind closed doors they are in a space where they watch in an insatiable way and they like what they see, but it triggers them. And the reason it's triggering them is, regardless of whether it ties to pal one or not, they see your strength of character. So this could just be a friend who admires you from afar. It could be a family member that you've lost touch with, right? You're not in the same circles. You don't go to each other's homes. You're not connected in that way anymore. And you might have been trying to lead them to water, lead them to a new opportunity, lead them to a new way of thinking. And they might see that and admire that and appreciate that, but they can't do it. They can't change. They can't change their perspective. They won't change their actions. They're not willing in the physical to trust their instinct about who you are and what you're saying and doing and maybe what you're actually offering them and drink from that cup. Yet they still admire you and they're intrigued by you 
but because they've either rejected you or denied what you shared or they don't want their ego bruised by admitting that you are right in where you're leading them this is someone who has to be the watcher in the shadows behind closed doors when nobody sees them and I'm actually seeing for some like I guess you know that could be checking you out you know through social media it could be you know because I'm seeing like a big screen TV, I'm seeing almost like, again, and I'm not saying this is how this person lives, right? I'm not saying that they live in an empty room with barely anything there and just a TV, but I'm seeing like everything in the room just kind of disappear and just a person honed in on like a big screen TV where, or, or a, you know, maybe a big screen TV that's connected to a laptop or whatever, and they're looking at you, Right. But there's something that even though this person admires you from afar and there's something about what you represent that is really intriguing and um, it, it offers some kind of light and it's see either they, they see they see you as fulfilled. It feels like either you have that strength of character in the way that you move through life with integri integrity or you just you allow everybody to see you, you know, the naked truth of who you are and obviously some are going to judge that person because it's like a mermaid you know she's half woman half fish right so some people are going to go that doesn't fit but for this person there's something about you where it all clicks into place it all connects and yeah it's like they, they don't just want a piece of the pie you know because I'm seeing this as like a pie or a cake in segments they want all of it you know but for whatever reason, this person feels like they can't even have a slice of it. And again, it might tie back to the reasons for part one, but I really want to hone in more on the fact that this is someone who is more not restricted by other people or convention, but by their own ego. Because the self, it very much ties in with the dragon card from this deck. And that card talks about the self behind the self. And because this person's watching from the shadows, which might seem a bit icky, you know, for you, it might feel a little bit like, oh, you might feel like you're squirming a little bit sometimes because you sense or you know that they're watching. But it's like, oh, it makes me feel weird. Like I want to, you know, because I'm, it just, you're not actually tangled up and you're not actually in danger. But when you don't know what something is, trying to wrap your head around what's coming at you and whether it's with good intentions or not. Again, especially if someone's in a dark place and you're the only light that they're connected to or they, they feel cold and, and like miserable, but, it, but equally they might have also put you out in the cold and made you feel miserable because whatever strength of character you might have brought in, which was like, you know, this is a, like a new beginning energy. That person might have, I'm hearing, turned their nose up at it. And I'm seeing like, you know, I'm seeing like a character, male or female, with a long nose, like a prominent nose. And again, they, this person doesn't have to have that physical feature, but it's just drawing my attention. Yeah, the action, someone turned their nose up at the action of moving towards you or moving forward with you mm. but they listen they, they look and listen and they like what you say and they might be drawn to your lips it's weird isn't it because that strength card that lion doesn't have any lips but I'm getting that this person might be drawn to your lips or drawn to what you say it helps them, it helps them, but this person's too much in their ego to admit that, so they watch from the shadows. And this might be someone watching from the shadows in the sense that, you know, like if you're in a room with someone like at work, that person might be like just watching you from the other end of the room and you get a sense of it and you turn around and you look and they can't start looking all over the place. It could be like that. And it's just them watching you as you're talking to someone else. But God forbid that they would admit that they were really intrigued by your conversation 
or it's someone just watching you do your work or someone watching you on the phone. It reminds me of this thing that happened, which is I'm not saying that this person was like this at all. It was just a circumstantial thing. But it reminds me of when I was a kid, I was a teenager. Well, no, I wasn't. I was a young adult and I was a visual merchandiser for a big department store in Leeds. And I used to take on extra shifts. I ended up working like seven days a week, most weeks. And I took extra shifts on the cash desk. And my dad once came in, it was like Christmas and it was super busy. And he was watching me and I didn't realise he was there because I was super busy. And then he joined the queue to buy a present, some kind of Christmas presents. And I looked up and he was there. I was like, oh, hi, what are you doing here? And then while he was there in front of like the manager of that floor, he was saying, I was just watching you. <laughs> like, that's not creepy. And he said, yeah, I was just watching you interacting with the customers and and he'd taken notice of really weird things like he'd taken notice of the way that I counted the change back and he said and, and, and how I'd folded the clothes and put them in the bag and and he said and you asked them do you want the receipt in the bag or in, in your hand and you gave them the coins and then and then the note and the receipt and he'd noticed all these little details of like because cause to him I guess he was because he, he was a quite a crossing the t's dot in the i's type of person so he probably noticed it from that perspective but i think he noticed it also from a perspective of you treated everybody differently and you were considerate and thoughtful i think this is what someone it's like they they, they might notice those qualities in you or they just see a strength of character within you that is so intriguing and appealing i'm hearing and they notice every little detail because they're always watching could be someone at work and you're on the phone and they just like he or she has just got a really personable nature or he or she just is so switched on you know every time someone wants it or they're so forthcoming and but why it's like oh you can lead a horse to water but you can't make it drink so what is so frightening about the way you're splashing around that makes this person think that they can't drink from your waters is it like power one, that lack of strength, that lack of strength and stamina, just the lack of strength to get the first, to make the first move or just, or, or they've got the strength to, you know, that maybe they don't have staying power. Maybe they're quite flighty and, you know, like a, what's it called when a, a horse is booking? Now it's reminding me of a guy I briefly dated who was a, um, what do you call it? He used to break horses, that's it. I think that's the phrase. I don't know if that's the title of the job, but it used to break horses. So, yeah. And maybe, again, this is this person's ego. This person can break you. They might be able to, I mean, this again, there's this sense of like squirming, almost like you can hear the hooves like, doo -doo -doo -doo, and it's like, what the heck is coming at me? I don't want to get crushed and squashed. And these eyes just looking at you and it's like, where is that coming from? Imagine if you were looking into a dark room and all you saw were two eyes looking at you. That would freak you out. If you were like, I sense someone looking and it was someone's eye like peering through the keyhole <laughs> because they don't want you to know that they've got the key and they want to come in or whatever. And you could literally leave the key out and say the key is under the mat. If you want to come in, come in. But again, it's like you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. It feels like maybe they don't want to be tamed and they feel like you or anyone would do that. Or maybe they you're not, you're not showing up in the way they're used to. And maybe their ego can, they don't feel like they can live up to who you are or they don't feel like they're man or woman enough for you or they feel like, you're so strong in your position, maybe independently as a single man or woman, that you wouldn't want to take on them or you wouldn't want to take on their baggage or you wouldn't want to literally ride them off, you know, because they're, they're maybe they're unpredictable and you're really steadfast or maybe you're wild and free and they're like, oh, no, I want to rein him or her in. But really what they're, what they're struggling with is their own stuff, right? Is, is the self behind the self and having that seen and also being able to say to another person or show another person, I see you and I see 
the opportunity and the promise here. But it's like saying that is going to somehow either put you in a position of power where you might be able to like hurt them. And, you know, I want what you're offering. OK, well, I'll give you it. But then if you took it away, it's like, oh, God, if I'd never told him or her that I want to drink from their waters, then I wouldn't be in this position where they can take it away. There's something like that. So it is in a way your strength of character that triggers their ego. But this is already someone who, no matter who they admire, they have this insatiable appetite. And maybe that's why there's that in and out energy as well. And that horse booking where, you know, maybe they want to go and visit different shells that they're not willing to abandon something that they're already in or abandon a sense of self that they like to present in the world. Or maybe it's the way you carry yourself and you move and you adapt and you shift and you change in order to go, you know, into new beginnings and to adapt and twist and, you know, and this person feels maybe more stuck in the safety of the room that they've always been in, even if it feels empty. It's again, again, it's almost like having the key to get out of the room and choosing to stay in there. So this person generally already does edge growth out. Now, again, that's not to say that this might not be a successful person, right? But I feel like, yeah, and may have had a lot of victories in their life. And again, may have already achieved a lot of success, especially in quite a grounded way. I'm feeling like this could be someone with the horse energy and the earth the alchemic symbol for earth and the fact that this person seems a little bit more either cold emotionally or hot and cold emotionally i feel like this person might be very grounded you know it might be a self-made man or woman it might be someone who's achieved a lot of success in the physical and things have started to pay off but the promise of like building something new with you that might be loving or it might just be Mm. again expressing themselves expressing the truth of how they really see you and embracing it embracing it or embracing you i feel that they're they're stuck maybe so, this person's so established because it says on the back here i now establish a new awareness of success maybe they're so established in where they're at and because they they might show up as a very confident person and maybe they're appealing and maybe people admire them that if they were to go into something new which would be successful in a different way a new I, I now establish a new aware awareness of success I know I can be as successful as I make my mind up to be I move into the winning circle if this person's already in a winning circle in the material world in terms of what they've manifested because of what they've nurtured and maybe that's why they're protective their ego's protecting it because it's like oh i don't want to change that and i'm not going to twist myself into a pretzel for this person just because they look like a prosperous opportunity prosperous golden being you know it's a gem it's a pearl you're a gem you're a pearl it's like i've already drawn all this stuff to me i might be drawn to this but i can't Maybe, maybe it won't be successful and then I'll lose everything. I also feel like in order to um, justify where they're at and where they're staying and how they go about watching this put in the fact that they're actually edging growth out in a different way. They're edging growth out on an emotional level. They're edging growth out when it comes to growth of the true self as opposed to growth in the physical world which is part of their identity but not who they are really or not who they are in in its fullness so your strength of character triggers them because it highlights that they're edging growth out but i also feel like the way that this person justifies not being able to click with you or fit with you or not making a move towards you or coming across to you like they've turned their nose up at you or even telling themselves that you would turn your nose up at them 
is they've put you in a box or they've told themselves that you've put them in a box and you may have put them in a box. You may have put them in a box. But again, it's probably because they're not showing up with strength and stamina and you may have tried to lead them to water. Um, you might have put them in a box because of that experience with them. That this person's got like an insatiable appetite for you because they're not just intrigued by you. They, they have an attraction to you and they admire you. But I think this person might be more used to, it's weird, because I think this person might be admired, but more because of their achievements. And they might be used to attracting people that are caught up in. So people are attracted to them, but again, their admiration, no matter how hard they've worked, comes from maybe what they've gained because of what they've worked for as opposed to their true nature and characteristics so they used to get in a lot of that attention and attraction and you might not roll like that you might be like okay cool yeah you know you may and again you may have even expressed seeing that but you're not really you know there's something about you when whatever you've said whatever you've seen whatever you've heard whatever you've shared whatever moves you've made you still come across a little bit like I'm good here doing my thing and, you know, this person might want you to twist yourself into a pretzel. And if you have got yourself all wrapped up, not understanding why you feel a bit, you know, when people say about getting the ick with people, it's because this is intense. This, this, this is not just like eye contact and a twinkle in the eye. This is like intense. Like someone's consuming you through their eyes. You know, that feels like, um, well, it's vulnerable, isn't it? Like this little earthworm. But it's also only doing it because it's so restricted, because this person's pulling the reins back on themselves. If someone wasn't, it, like I say, if someone wasn't in the shadows watching, you wouldn't see just beady eyes looking at you. And I, I didn't mean to say beady eyes, but I guess that's how it comes across. If they were out in the light and they were moving towards you and you could see all of them, that would see, like, you, you would see it coming and, and, know, and, and know by the body movements and the body language how somebody was maybe advancing towards you. So, yeah, it is someone who admires you from afar and they're very attracted to you. But I think they're used to people's admiration coming through as them being physically attracted to them and or attracted to the things that they have in the physical. And yes, I feel like this person is physically attracted to you, but there's something about your uh, strength of character that they find incredibly appealing and admirable. And that's why they're intrigued. But they're intrigued to a point where it's insatiable because it's all hidden and it might have all been hidden from the start, right? And you're very sensitive and you've just sensed it. And maybe even sensed, you know, you might have felt like this person's harsh, like cold. They put you out in the cold or they're very harsh in the way that they treat you. But there's something about like this person, the environment that they're in or how they feel in their environment having to suppress this or do this secretly feels harsh on them so you might feel like you've been put through the ringer a little bit or being turned inside out a little bit trying to understand this person at times but I feel like imagine someone in the snow with the rain pouring down in a bit of a dark place watching you. No wonder you feel like that. No wonder you feel like that or have felt like that. You've probably, I'm almost getting like wanting to crawl out of your skin because that's how creepy that can feel. I look in the mirror and say, I love and accept myself exactly as I am. 
you may not be like that or you may not be like that all of the time or you might not have been like that when you first came into contact with this person but this person thinks that you are they think that you're just like oh yeah i love and accept myself and again maybe part of the way that they justify themselves is that oh well he or she would turn their nose up at me because they think that they're special you know but i don't think that that's who you are and i think this person needs to look in the mirror when it comes to putting other people in a box or feeling like other people put them in a box because they're keeping themselves in a box and it's an empty room that's upside down, that's cold and dark and even though they've got a key to get out or they've got a key into a warmer room, they will not take it, they will not use it. They're looking through the keyhole and you can see their beady eyes from the shadows, from the corner of the room, from behind you, you know, and I'm hearing fixated fixated now this person also could be a sensitive person who clams up a little bit but yeah i actually feel like this person they if they are sensitive right if they are sensitive then they're either only sensitive because of how they are drawn to you and they're not sensitive like that with everybody or they're sensitive when it comes to their emotions and maybe more intimate dynamics where you have to really show who you are but in their everyday life with the people that they have, either on surface level or on a, suit, on a professional level or on a level where they can still keep certain aspects of themselves protected, I feel like they're actually quite confident, successful, very kind of, even though that's earthy and I do think that this person might be quite practical, quite uh, intellectual, quite switched on. and But again I'm at, this is why someone's drawn to you because you are you're switched on you're just in a different way and you're also switched on to them and you're switched on to what they're doing and you're switched on to how they go about things and you're switched on to you may be switched on to the conflict that they have in the way that they see you but I, I really feel like it just it's you're switched on to the fact that they're there like her she she knows she knows that that dolphin wants to leap in but she's like Whoa. that's what you're switched on to and again part of that strength of character might have come from growing out of a place of twisting yourself up for this person or people like this person and staying true to yourself right or just never batting an eyelid for someone who's in or out or, you know, doesn't have the strength to step forward or doesn't have the stamina to stay, you might have always been like this. And there's something that maybe you've said, and I'm saying due credit, there's something that you've said that this person can't bear to give you due credit for, and it might have been about them or about their approach or about what you know that they're doing. Something about their character, I just said, I just heard sorry yeah you've recently said something about their character or you've recently and or you've recently said something that is bang on in terms of your character like you've said something that's so true about who you are that no matter who heard it this person heard it and they know that's so bang on this is this person's true character and that says a lot about them. And or you've recently said something about their character that they would not give you due credit for that. They're, I don't feel like this person's in a position because they're comfortable. They're, com at the, they're not comfortable. I mean, if it ties to power one, maybe they're not comfortable and that's why they're trying to build up the strength. But overall, they've been comfortable in that room just watching, you know. Now, I just heard watching and waiting. So again, maybe some, some are watching and waiting and I feel like you're like the light, you know? It could be that their light is about to go out. Like if, if, all, if it's a dark room and all the windows and doors are closed and, you know, it, it feels like it's becoming more restrictive and maybe their light is about to go out and it's like, this is my key. I, I, I have to turn the key and open that particular door. But it can also be that you're the only light keeping someone going a little bit. And things are getting darker and colder. And maybe they've always had the key, but the key is to move to a new shell or show up 
with all the parts of themselves on display. So let's see what tarot I'm drawn to. I'm going to use the Oracle Tarot first. <clears throat> I'm getting a very majestic um, person. I do... I do feel like there's something very majestic about this person. That horse is just, it's actually reminding me of a horse connected to family that was so big. It was actually a female horse. So this can be a man or a woman, a friend or a lover, whatever. But, oh, she was so beautiful. She was like creamy white with like black speckles. That's, I, she, I remember one stepping into the, um, Field, not field. I don't know why words of words words are failing me. Yeah, maybe words fail you around this person because it's so obvious that they want to come towards you. Because the story I'm trying to tell you is how this family member said, "Come in to the barn, to the field, to the paddock." Thank you. Come into the paddock, and I stepped in and shut the gate, and then this horse, this horse just made a beeline for me and was running at me. And the owner, the family member or person connected to family, shouted, don't move. <laughs> so I stood by the gate, which was almost shut. And Moonbeam was running towards me. And right at the last minute, she just darted off in a different direction. Oh, my God, it was frightening. But it was so... Horses, I'm always drawn to horses. They're so powerful and majestic. And it's like, if you sense that energy, regardless of whether you hear the hooves or you see the horse, if you sense that energy, it's going to have an impact, right? And you're going to know that there's something, you're going to know certain qualities about that energy, whether it's light or shadow. Well, there you go. It's probably someone who is a masculine or their energy towards you, they come in with a lot of power. They come in with a lot of power, but I'm here. But I'm saying, but they do, I'm hearing, but they don't say anything. So maybe that's why they're attracted to you because you do say things, you do express yourself. Maybe you express yourself powerfully. Maybe you don't suppress your feelings. Maybe you don't deny who you really are. But I'm I'm getting. And maybe they don't express their emotions. But they've got, they're just like wanting to come at you. And again, this could be a woman in masculine energy, depending on what your dynamics are. Yeah, and the world, but it wanted to come out. Because this is what, this is, this is you. I feel like this is you. This is your energy, sitting pretty, Right? on the top of the world, or that's the way that they see you, or that's the way that they see what you're offering, or that's the way that they see your energy. Again, you're naked there, and you're on top of the world, or you're in your little space. And again, maybe a person feels like you hold the power. It's giving me that vibe of, because um, under sensitivity, we've got Mother Earth, and she's holding the world, and we've also got Earth Mother here. So maybe your feminine power I'm getting that phrase, the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. There might be something so powerful about your energy, but it's the opposite of theirs in terms of the feminine energy. That's so powerful that it, it kind of rocks this person a little bit. And therefore, I feel like this person either feels like, you know, the ball's in your court and, you know, or they'd have to put themselves in such a vulnerable place with you that they're not comfortable putting themselves in because he, look, he's got this, he's all covered up and she's butt naked. And I feel like that's, the, the world is upside down because the empty room is upside down. Yeah, there's no, there's no, there's no direct line of communication. There's no offer. There's no truth. There's no, you know, it's, it hasn't happened. I don't know whether it will happen. And again, upright, it feels like you're expressing your feelings. But upright, this person has feelings, but they're not telling you. And the longer it stays like that, the more likely that will happen. And now I'm seeing um, snuffing out a candle um, with one of those. And I forget what it's called, but I'm seeing that just snuff out the flame of the candle. 
I just, I, I wonder if this person fears failure. I'm hearing I don't have what it takes and then I just got the magician and the hermit. If you're... I'm saying something about I'm getting something about to tell the to tell to tell the tale or something. Telling tales. I don't think it's telling tales. It's either a saying or a lyric, something about to tell the tale. To take a chance and trust that instinct and intuition. To tell Oh what is it? The hermit with the crab, right? Change. Know when to move to a new shell, especially if yours no longer fits, but someone's still in hermit mode. And again, almost like justifying to themselves, it makes sense to stay in this empty room and not take this chance. I, I don't know why that person would think that. And again, maybe they think you're withheld or you're withdrawn or you've pulled back. But I think, again, that would be because that cold, dark, damp atmosphere and energy snuffs you out. So if you have withheld yourself, it's probably because you've already taken chances. You've already tried to move to something more comfortable. You've already climbed up this hill. You've already turned yourself inside out. Or you're already in a position where you've done that so much with other people that when this person came along, you were like, nope. You show up with as who you are and what you want or you don't show up at all, you know. So, again, it's more comfortable for this person to maybe go, oh, well, he or she is withdrawn or he or she doesn't want to let me in or he or she. And it's like, no. Hmm. Bottom of the deck, Wheel of Fortune. Confirming again, change and action, that the action might require a risk or taking a chance and the change could bring the balance and the resolution between this person and you. But I also feel like, isn't it very, very similar? The core of moving towards your own personal destiny, whether that's attached to a person, this person attached to you, or... It's tied up in a person, romantically or otherwise. That destiny is directly cut, like, like aligning with that destiny is about the centre of yourself. That's, the, that's at the core of this. It's Nothing's ever going to change if someone can't wrap their head around the fact that a new beginning where they feel like they have the strength of character to open new doors and let themselves out of this cold, dark, damp, empty room before their light fades or step towards someone that they see and appreciate and that they find appealing and that they admire, that they on some level already have the key to open the door, that they're more comfortable looking through the keyhole is the truth. that they want to balance something out, balance out a problem, overcome a challenge that you've had, or just open their mouth about their feelings. That's the core issue. <laughs> and otherwise, as much as you might feel like, oh, well, we won't have our destiny, if like, for example, you feel like you're destined to move forward with this person, you you will have, your, you, you're living your destiny if you're in this energy. But if what turns you upside down or inside out is the way they move, then, yeah, you might get wrapped up in thinking, oh, you know, we're still, this isn't happening or this is unfair. But you have to think about it more as this person will have their power and their strength in their own way, in their own life, but they'll always feel burdened by being this watcher when it comes to you. You can sit there and move towards your destiny and just keep trusting how you are being told to step into the new. 
and remember at the core the core of who you are is what's important in the way that you show up in the world and, and adapt to change as you need to, which yes, might be physically or energetically caught up in this person, but regardless, they'll be choosing they won't be choosing Dharma, they'll be choosing karma. Because they don't because of that. Because they won't. They're in a dark room with the burden of a heavy they might have a heavy heart because they did you wrong. They might have a heavy heart because they haven't expressed their feelings. They might have a heavy heart because you have expressed your feelings and now they've got the burden of carrying that, knowing that they didn't express it back. And who's going to be unfulfilled? Who's going to be looking out? Who's going to be waiting? Well, you might be, but you don't have to be. So let's get a couple more with the lightsabers. If you are feeling a bit stuck yourself, I would say just take a pause, you know, to wrap your head around this message. But ultimately, do whatever you need to do to keep your flame lit, you know, to keep that spark alive within, to stay in a space where you have the strength of character to move forward authentically. And just accept that this is not your problem in some ways it is and it might feel like that because you have to deal with that energy of someone watching you and you have to deal with the fact that someone that you might feel some kind of connection to is in a cold dark damp room but on some level you might not like to hear this but on some level they are okay because they're okay with this identity as long as they can show up like that and most people are attracted to it on some level they're okay until they're really not and then when they're really not okay, I guess you'll have to cross that bridge when you get to, to it. Someone else might have stepped into your life by then. Maybe that's a new door that will be opening for you. A different dolphin jumping in. Possibly. That's that horse though, right? Uh, from a, like seriously watching from afar and that's that pre-empress energy sitting pretty and the fool on the bottom of the deck that's that horse watching from afar watching in the shadows behind closed doors insatiable that's that booking horse that needs someone to, to break him or her and that's you with your flame and this person's drawn to it, but they will not step in. Maybe they can't step in honestly and be vulnerable. Maybe they can't step in because they did do something wrong to you. Maybe they can't step in because they just don't know how to express their feelings. I think I've already covered that. Or they are now, are they trying to build up the stamina? Because we do have the full card. Let's put the full, let's, let's shuffle. Let's keep the full card on the bottom of the deck, but let's shuffle. Because I feel like, hmm, <laughs> you know, know when I was getting that message about telling tale and I couldn't quite place it and now I'm getting time will tell. It's yet to be seen. So the intention might be there, but it's yet to be seen. And I feel like for you, you only buy into it. You only give it your time and attention when it's seen clearly. Because you've got like, I'm getting justice here, but I'm also getting like, um, uh, what's it called? <laughs> you know, where two people, two kids play on that. I'm getting that, trying to balance out, but, and I'm also getting justice. So it's yet to be seen, because remember the earthworm was in reverse. It's yet to be seen. And... You can be in this position and it will continue to be watched. And you see how that lion or lioness has got closed eyes and she's got closed eyes and she's got closed eyes. It's like and her eyes are blindfolded and she's got closed eyes. Holy moly. It's like it's not your problem. It, it's not your problem. Seeing is believing. It's yet to be seen. Time will tell. And there's something about telling tales. And I just don't know if someone told tales to you or to other people or the tale that they want to tell you. It's 
now I'm hearing, oh God, this is soppy. And remember, this doesn't have to be romantic. So if it's just someone who loves you deeply, they, they struggle with their ego around their feelings. It could be, you know, a long lost friend, right? But I'm getting Taylor's old as time. <laughs> do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Finding you were wrong. Yeah, that's Beauty and the Beast. That's Beauty and the Beast. And I just heard, and what a beauty you are. Wow. Because of your character. Because of your character. So keep, keep, keep moving. Keep moving. Keep, keep doing you. Keep having your new beginnings. Keep creating the life that you want. Keep trusting yourself and trusting spirit and trusting your intuition. And if this beast wants to change his or her ways, I guess they will do that. So don't forget the prize draw. And if this was helpful, please do like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Hi, pal three. So you chose the lover with the snowflake obsidian. So we'll lay out the oracle and affirmation cards and then partway through we'll unpack with whatever tarot I'm drawn to. So firstly, I have to start by saying this actually goes in reverse, but don't panic because it's a little bit back and forth. We also got the bardo and the vulture, the bat, which wanted to come out in reverse. Gratitude. I love the first hints of spring. Music, harmony. Receptivity. Allow yourself to receive. This will increase your intuitive energy and ability to give to others. We have I release all criticism. Prudence, don't be lured by the siren's song. Clouds, temporary problems. And arrow, you're on the right path regarding some aspect of your life. So, why is this tricky? Because we're asking, who is intrigued by you? What are their intentions? But what I'm actually getting is... There is a back and forth, it cuts both ways type of energy because the lover wanted to come out in reverse with the bardo up front. But then I was like, for the purpose of, you know, drawing a person to power one, two or three, I felt like I needed to put the, the lover upright. And then I was like, what does the bardo tell me in reverse? So for some of you, it's highlighting that both you and this person which might be a past love, past relationship, a past fling, someone you wanted to date and it never went anywhere, someone that you know from afar or that you've only met once or you've crossed paths or whatever, but it doesn't have to be a lover, right? It could be a disagreement you've had with a family member or a friend. It could be not being able to see eye to eye with someone. It's someone significant. I would say it has to, at the very least, be like a platonic soulmate if it's not someone that you have genuine love for in a romantic way but there's love here there is love here there is definitely love here and I'm going to lean more into the romantic love because I do feel like all three piles have leaned more into romantic love a little bit today so what I'm getting is with this kind of back and forth idea back and forth energy in almost like someone's been back and forth over why they're intrigued by you but I feel like you have. At some time, both you and this person have been back and forth on why you're intrigued by each other. At some time, you've been back and forth over what is it that draws you to a person. And I feel like you've told you've both told yourself really positive, beautiful things about the other person, but really shitty things as well. <laughs> like almost like that this person has evil intentions and they're really a dark person or they really want to come at you and attack you or they're selling you a story or they're singing you know they're trying to get you to it's like it feels like you jump it's like you've 
you've been so positive about each other and then so negative about each other and you genuinely may feel like I've only been negative about him or her because they've been negative about me but I actually feel like it's coming from a similar place and it's almost like you've latched onto that energy and you've fed into that energy and it's got worse and worse and worse and worse in the sense that you've now gone down quite a dark path where I feel like you've you've got to a position now where you're looking at this person going no matter what I've done that's wrong this person's in their shadow. They won't go through like this dark night of the soul. They're not open to a new beginning. They don't express gratitude for me. They don't want to work with me. They're not being harmonious. And even though Spirit's saying that is a temporary problem, and I'm not promising you that that means that you will come together, but it is a temporary problem because there is still something that I think you need to pick apart about your view of them now or in the past that's tainted the energy that they're picking up on and skewed their view of you and I understand that their view of you has tainted the energy that you're picking up on but if someone has a stance where they're like oh they're in reverse and I'm right and they don't see and I do and they're not in, you know they're not receptive but I am then even if there's just one little thing that you're not getting, like the marrow that's like in the bone, even if that's that one little bit that you're not getting, it would be prudent to allow yourself to pick that apart because that means that the chance for a temporary problem to be overcome is still on some level, even if it's 1%, impacted on by you right however somebody and and you know yeah I still feel like that probably doesn't feel fair to you on some level because I uh, because I do feel like you probably feel like you're in that energy and they're in that energy which is you might feel like you've learned a lot of lessons and you've really unpicked things and you know, you've already gone through picking yourself apart, picking them apart, whatever, going through judgment or criticism, maybe feeling like this person doesn't trust you or sees you as some kind of, like you're singing them a song and they don't have gratitude. And I feel like you've got to a p point where you feel like on some level, Sammy, stop. You feel like on some level you are on the right path and you've done some reflection and you're grateful for the lessons as difficult, uncomfortable or painful as they might have been. And you're just trying to move forward with prudence, with, with a sense of like caution around the energy that this person might bring in physically or energetically. And a sense of like, there is a fear. There's like a fear of, because this can like represent death as well. There's a fear of what's next. What's going to happen next? Because I'm even getting something dark with the bat, with the with the red under the wings. It's giving me like, you know, the difference between angel wings and devil wings. And, and it almost looks like a spider and it just feels like there's a. I, I you know, I don't want to go and like, you know. I don't want to go into that space now. I don't want to deal with that energy now because something particularly dark might, you might feel like it's come directly from this person. But there's a couple of different things as well. As much as you might kind of look at this person with the snowflake obsidian energy behind it and kind of go, it's not all black and white. Like there's different, you know, I don't know, like maybe you've tried not to have a black and white perspective or you think that they have had a black and white perspective. But I also feel like the snowflake, I'm getting like, how beautiful is a snowflake? But it almost melts instantaneously. When you catch it, it just melts in your hand. So there is a sensitivity that you both have to being dragged under or... I don't know if, you know, one of you might be afraid of being dragged under emotionally because you're quite sensitive, but you hide it. The other one might be afraid of attack. 
Someone might be afraid of what one person's going to say that might seem quite critical and, and it really hurts them emotionally. But the other person might feel really um, pulled down by the energy of a person and what they're not saying and doing. So maybe this is a person who feels like you've been, you've picked them apart and criticised them, but you're kind of saying, yeah, but energetically, I can feel, I can feel, I feel like I'm being pulled under, I'm being dragged down. And what's interesting is, as well as that kind of cuts both ways energy, I'm getting that overall, this dynamic is like going through a tormenting transition. <laughs> There's some kind of tormenting energy around the truth of feelings. And I do feel like this person who is intrigued by you is more tormented now. And I feel like you are avoiding tormenting yourself because there's an acceptance of like they're upside down. And I don't want to play around with anything dark, dangerous, evil, corrupt. I want to see where I'm going. I want to see things clearly. I don't want to get caught up in what I think a person feels, what they've said one day, but they haven't followed through on. I don't want to, I don't want to deal with that. It, and maybe, again, you've already gone through enough of a tormenting transition to recognise that, you know, you just, you're just grateful for the lessons and you're in a more balanced, harmonious place and you're trying to stay true to your path and have that sense of kind of vigilance and caution around who you let in, but you might still be missing that you are might maybe still looking at it as black and white, as in like you're in the light and they're in the shadow. But ultimately, both of you on some level have been captivated by this snowflake, which looks so gentle and, and you know, kind of like when people see snow for the same, first time, just like when people see blossom falling from the trees in spring, it's, it's well, not falling from the trees, when, yeah, there's something, you see people having these experiences for the first time, whether it's blossoms on the floor, whether it's the autumn leaves that have fallen that people are playing in, whether it's the snow and they're throwing snowballs or something like that, that whatever season it is, whatever site, you know, whatever season of life you're in, whatever this person brings in with their energy, which might be like spring or it might be like winter, there might be something about each other that's quite different. It's... As soon as it lands in your hand, it it's it melts. And is that because you're both like a harsh environment for one another? Or when you met, you were a harsh environment for one another? And that might be part of, you know, the black and white thinking, especially if you have gone through a tormenting transition enough to, you know, really look at things as clearly as possible, but only miss a little bit of the truth. And this person's still missing a lot of the truth. Understandable that you would have caution around that. But yeah, it feels like there's a coulda, woulda, shoulda energy overall. And it feels like it's the possibility of this was hampered by like pros and cons. And again, you may feel like someone had pros and cons around you and that coulda, woulda, shoulda energy was this person and not you. But to make sense of that and go through your own transition, as healthy as it might have been, part of you making sense of what they coulda, woulda, shoulda done but didn't, it's still from your perspective, right? And you still might be looking at one key thing about this person that's too black and white, which might actually be. They were picking up on your energy as well. They just might not have been as aware of it as you are. They were feeling judged and criticised by you and it might be in a different way. You might have felt judged and criticised because they didn't choose you or they weren't vocal or they didn't express their feelings or they didn't move quick enough or, you know, they hesitated or, you know, they said something that came across as sharp but you might have actually criticised them and you just don't know it. Or you know it, but you felt like they deserved it because of something they did or didn't do. And I feel like it cuts both ways. And I think there's a song called Cuts Both Ways. Cuts both ways. Da, 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 da. 
Da, 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 da. And it cuts both ways. I, I can't think of the, I know it's an 80s song, but I can't think of the artist. So, how you saw each other, or maybe even still see each other, even if it's just that missing bit that you still look at in a black and white way, and there's a lot that they still can't see clearly about you. How you see each other is skewed. And what's interesting is in these cards, um, this one has the other, if anybody knows anything about my personal work and my personal readings, the energy of the overlapping energies when I do like a soul to soul reading with the two energies that overlap, this card in the book has the, has the circles overlapping. So it has circle and ripples, like, you know, as if it's all that inner work. It has two circles that overlap as if it's that integrated interactive energy. And then it has three circles. So I feel like, and then this card in the book has a heart broken, a heart full on its own, a heart upside down, and then two hearts overlapping. So what's going on for you and what's going on for them and how you feel and how they feel in different ways or at different times or brought about by different things has been the same experience. And I don't fit, I definitely don't think this person appreciates it. And if they do, I feel like they're probably at a point of maybe judging themselves for putting you in that position. And I think you appreciate that this is potentially an energetic connection as well as a physical connection or relationship. But as much as you might appreciate, you know, you go through your lessons and they go through their lessons and you have your experience and they have their experience. There might still be something where you look at them as if they've done something wrong to you. And they might have done something wrong. I really, yeah, because we've got like something that might not have succeeded between you both might have come about because of some kind of trouble that they caused or some kind of accusations. And we've even got involving the law and then we've got victory in some endeavour. But we've got someone is extremely stubborn and unwilling to change. So if someone was extremely stubborn and unwilling to change in order to have victory with you, and again, the law can just be justice, fairness, balance, then... You know, it's like they might have just thrown accusation John way because it was more comfortable than changing. And that's how you, you know, if you feel like that's not fair, I'm not saying I'm not making excuses for this person, but because we all have a choice, right? And maybe even someone made a choice like, you know, they might have been lured by the siren song. There's a there's a harp there. And this person's playing an instrument. So maybe they, you know, will I lured by another person, male or female? Or they accused you or someone else accused you of being this siren. But again, where does that come from? The same fear. The same fear of being pulled down or pulled under or overwhelmed by emotions or attacked. And just because you might not have deliberately attacked someone or just because you might not have been consciously making a choice to go at someone doesn't mean that it didn't hurt them or it wasn't critical. But maybe there's only one or two percent of the whole experience that you need to look at from that perspective in order to, you know, kind of truly move forwards without any reservations or um, regret or subconscious guilt or shame maybe this person's still working on a heck of a lot of that in fact I would say that this person is probably in a dark night of the soul like moving through the cold winter months and spring is coming but the other thing that I was getting as well is I was I was asking so are these two people grateful of, for each other because spirit's giving me the message that it cuts both ways and obviously who is intrigued by you and what are their intentions yes I could say they're grateful for you. They see you as someone who is, has a harmonious, balanced approach. They know that moving towards you or moving forwards with you would be the right path or they can see you moving forward and overcoming these problems in your life that may, they might have caused, that you might have had with them by doing your own shadow work, right? 
and choosing love, not fear, or, you know, choosing to do what's right for you and others and not to do what's self-serving or what's not right. And this might be how this person's seen you, but because I was getting the cut to both ways, I was wondering if maybe you've both come across as not being receptive to one another. Closed down, shut off. I just heard tight-lipped. Again, one person might be tight-lipped, one person might not be, but the other person might be shut down emotionally and the other person might be more expressive. But maybe they haven't had an opportunity to express their emotions because the way they express it, again, perspective shift. It's not black and white. You might express your love in one way, they might express their love in another. You might share your feelings one way, they might share their feelings another. You know, you might feel safe to express something verbally or written someone else might feel safer to express it in a tactile way or by taking you to a place or by creating a space to have a particular conversation and I just feel like it might have come across like you're both not receptive again maybe in different ways at different times but I was asking about gratitude and what I got is at some point you've both been incredibly grateful for meeting one another and connecting with one another and then I was like at some point and then my eye drew into this and I was like I love the first hint of spring and I heard love at first sight for one or both of you on some level there was either love at first sight and I wouldn't just say that willy-nilly like love at first sight but it doesn't have to be intimate romantic love it could just be on some it can be that thing of like again in in this deck the swan gives me twin flame vibes or, you know, kindred spirit or soulmate vibes because there's a swan swimming and there's a swan upside down. So because the, the swan in the lover card came upside down, it makes me think that maybe you're like soulmates or you recognised each other. There was love at first sight because the love is timeless. It's been there for eons. It's been felt energetically before you met each other in person or it was actually that attraction that runs way deeper than just, oh, he's hot or she's hot. And it's like, this is the one, you know, and you just have that knowing. So I feel like at first there was this love at first sight energy of like, I recognize you. I know you. You're meant for me. This is meant to be. I We've done this before. Something like that. Or just, yeah, you're the one. Like everything that I've just seen in this moment is just telling me you're the one. But the reason I got up first is because I feel like that's what you both lost sight of. You lost sight of each other. And then there started to be this, on some level, these pros and cons based on the behaviour of one another, where the truth of feelings was not clear to the other person, no matter how clear each person felt that they were being. And then this coulda, woulda, shoulda was further hampered by constantly battling with, should I say this or should I do this or should I... And I feel like it was coming more from this person than you. But I also feel like maybe from you it should have come in more. Like, could I say it in this way? Or should I reach out right now? Or would it be better if I asked this instead of said this or told them this? You know, it feels like, you know, I'll flip it flip it as well maybe it would have been more prudent if you said well I could have should have would have gone about everything different myself I could say he or she could is thinking could have, I could have should have would have because of what they haven't said or what they said that they didn't mean or how they criticized me or how you know but maybe that's maybe that's that last little bit and not to get you stuck in guilt and shame but to release you from it because it's there in the subconscious that's the marrow. Maybe that would shift an energy in such a beautiful way that whatever problem you feel you might still have in moving forwards without regret and without any reservations because of this energy that you feel from this person or because you can't be with this person or wondering about whether this person's going to fly in, that might release it just by looking at that because it might shift something where you get that tasty last you know, and marrow's really good. I mean, I don't really eat meat, but marrow's really good. And that might shift something energetically in them. Because remember, the, 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 the circle with the ripples and then the two circles overlapping, the heart broken, the heart upside down, the heart 
you know, in one piece and then the hearts overlapping. And I feel like, yeah, so the reason that there was gratitude at first, but you might have lost sight of that one or both of you is because you both did come in like a gift. There was something where it felt like, oh my God, like I said, like that snowflake. And then it just went, it just, it just melted. It just disintegrated. It just fell apart. But not, but even the way it fell apart, there's something so, I mean, it, it's almost like, you know, that song, Beautiful Disaster, um, I, not the whole song, don't get caught up in the whole lyrics, but there's something that's even beautiful about the disaster that this has been or the disaster that you feel they've made of it or that you've both made of it. it it's like it's a beautiful disaster like because even even that snowflake even the fact that that snowflake landed in your hand and then you got the opportunity to see it just kind of disintegrate is so beautiful because you did have it you had it in your hand but it's but it's that's why it's tormenting because it's like i fucking had it i had it and i and i and i didn't know what to do with it or i didn't see it quickly enough or i didn't tell it it was precious or I didn't you know and it's oh it just feels like really frustrating <laughs> so but I feel like you're frustrated at them for not seeing it but I feel like there's something also of like did I handle them gently did I did I say oh, what a magical little snowflake you are or did I say you know I could have would have should have said that you know and again I don't want to make you feel bad because you can't go back and change history that you can liberate yourself from that by picking that apart and allow them to go through and then move forward without reservation, allowing them to go through whatever this bat, I mean, I just heard a bat out of hell. So yeah, they're going through hell. They're going through that torment, way worse than you are now. But, and then, and you've probably already been through that. This, this person's trying to make it to spring. They're just trying to, you know, hang on to get through this period, which is facing their own evils, facing their own wrongdoings, facing their own guilt and shame, facing their own behaviour, facing the way that they've maybe criticised you. I only give out that which I wish to receive in return. That not, Again, that's why both parties, I feel like on some level at some time, in different ways, have not been receptive because... And also why the other person couldn't be receptive because both people were not giving what they wanted to because they were so afraid of what they might get back or what they might not get back or how what they give might not be received. My love and acceptance of others is mirrored to me in every moment. And there's your key point, mirror. you Whether you feel like you're mirrored souls, you are mirroring each other and maybe just on slightly different timelines or a slightly different pace so oh how lovely so you've both had to choose of your own volition to turn over a new leaf to work on yourself and achieve a level of um how do i i'm, I'm hearing grace grace that allows you to turn over a new leaf in the way that you carry yourself and and, and show up and and you can't control whether the other person turns over a new leaf or not. It it just feels like it tastes the same. It tastes the same. What you might be looking at them and going, "Oh my god, look at all the eggshells in there." And I'm chewing on it and it's it's awful. But they might be looking at it and going, "You like I like my egg runny and it's, you know, I don't know what they call it in America, sunny side up, all that kind of stuff. Or you've broken the yolk and it's poured out and I like to, you know, stack it up and then squeeze my sandwich and have the yolk, you know. It just feels like, I honestly feel like this is almost like an epiphany that for both of you, 
you know maybe you've put a lot of time into reflecting and this last little bit just needs to hit in the way that it tastes the same to them it it, it tastes it's distasteful that you would handle them in anything less than respect and like this is exactly what i want because there's something within them that recognizes that you see who they are and that they they were for you and yet you didn't show up right and you're looking going only now is he or she recognizing what they were serving me is distasteful but it's the same it tastes the same at the time it tasted the same in different ways at different times it tasted the same and maybe it's just about like love what kind of eggs do you want do you want them boiled you know do you want them poached do you want them fried do you want them sunny side up or you know like how do you want them and 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 also having the patience with the other person to be like i do want them fried and i do want them runny but you know i do like them to be coated a little bit but instead of flipping them and risking breaking them i put like a lid over the frying pan just to kind of steam them a little bit all right yeah i can do that no worries you know like just communicating <laughs> But again, that might be frustrating for you because you might be intellectually thinking, I did communicate or I tried to communicate. But yeah. Oh, dear. So on the bottom of the deck, we do have everything I touch is a success. And we have wild. Believe in your otherworldly beauty, dance with the waves and drink in the sunshine. And you see how that uh, shell maybe like an oyster shell, I'm not sure, is on a pillar, like a crown would be, you know? Like this, of, you both want each other's respect and you haven't given it. I'm, I'm sorry if that is challenging, but you haven't given it to each, to each other in the way that the divine was directing you to. And at times you might think, well, they don't deserve my time and attention and they don't deserve me to you know, keep coming back around or they don't deserve me to wait or this person might think, well, they don't deserve me to say sorry when they said that and did the other. But on a basic level, you both deserved it. You both, you were both worthy of the other person showing up with respect in the, in the most basic foundational way. And on some level, you let each other down. So I'm just going to pull some um, tarot and actually what I might do is like highlight that on some level you are both trying to face this shadow aspect within yourself in your own way at different times and trying to be prudent about the way you criticise one another to overcome these temporary problems, at least to move forwards independently, if not together. But I'm going to get some, sorry, I'm going to get some tarot. I'm sitting on the final channeled message that I got because I just want to see what cards come through. I, I still feel like I'm going to share it, but and it ties back to the fact that you were a gift. You were always a gift and you recognised that and had gratitude for it earlier on. And again, maybe you had more gratitude for it because maybe you saw it more clearly or, or with more awareness or from a higher perspective or from a lighter perspective. But the truth is, on some level, this person, as much as they might not have been receptive to something that you might have expressed or done or, or shared in a positive or critical way, they have had this love at first sight feeling towards you and wanted to give, but felt like some problem or problems arose that made you not appear like you were receptive to them. And that might have made them kind of go, oh, well, they were just singing me a song then, or they, you know, or so they just want to criticise me. Uh, it, imagine if someone was going to do something really beautiful. Now I'm getting like a picnic. Like imagine someone was planning to take you on a picnic or something, and then you kind of, I don't know, they show up with a picnic, and then you go, what's all this? And you I thought we were going out for dinner. 
and and instead of just saying oh my god that's so sweet and seeing how it goes and then being like do you know what love next time maybe just let me know and i'll put on something a bit more low-key than this fancy dress it it's like what's this and you and and the way that it comes across is is this it and and this person's thinking oh this would be so romantic you know or something's just starting to blossom and then as you're getting to know each other it's like you say one thing and this person which again if it's their own shadow that they have to deal with because they take something too harshly because they're too sensitive to something they take it as a criticism and it's not meant to be their lesson is well maybe I should ask what do you mean by that or or is that not what you want or well what would you prefer to do that I feel like it's almost like the bud just opens and then you're like, oh, I don't like the smell of freesias or, oh, God, I, like that's, you know, my ex used to buy me those flowers or, you know, oh, you know, they come in with a present and they're just being ge a generous man or woman. And it's like, oh, what have you done? And this person might just feel like, I mean, that might be reminiscent of an ex who never seemed grateful for their gifts or their expression of love it just it just it feels like this person felt like they were going to fall short or you did and they picked up on that and maybe started to wonder if you were not who you said you were so i've got the spirit song deck just because of this harmony energy. Sorry if you can hear my dog. He doesn't normally sit. He's, come, he's started joining me when I'm doing readings again. Three of crystals, three of pentacles, collaboration and productivity. And you've got the bee, but it's a singular bee, which makes, again, makes me think queen bee. It's again, and it, it might, it, that might be how one person's come across more than the other, whether you're male or female and they're male or female. But it also feels like, you know, like a busy bee. Maybe someone was really busy. Maybe someone was really busy and you took that the wrong way. Maybe someone was busy and they didn't communicate it. Maybe someone thought that you were too busy and didn't have time for them. Or, you know, you might be, a, you know, one of you might be a leader or a boss or a manager in your job or business. Um, I'm also getting like um, buzzing around like you someone might have thought you had lots of people buzzing around you or someone might have thought that you were buzzing around and interfering too much or you know this it feels like there needs to be a balance here between it's like it's like the bees in this deck I think is the eight of pentacles there's the eight of pentacles in this deck where there's two bees and I often see it as a collaboration between two people or the the higher self and the physical self or it's like the king or queen bee with the worker bee and people playing different roles at different times. And this feels quite singular. So I just wonder if, again, part of what might have come across as not receptive is, oh, he or she's happy being single or he or she's just dating and just wants to be on their own or he or she doesn't need me and I'm going to fall short or he or she's too busy for me. But in spite of someone being busy, they might have been really, you know, trying to get just the right thing that would like draw you in to want to stay a while you know stay a while why am i getting stay a while and oh look at this i just have to show you this i'm going to put it back but i've just heard deflated deflated because the eight of shells can can be about walking away but i i it depends Maybe someone walked away or maybe someone was afraid someone would walk away. So they walked away first. But quest, it's it's also kind of going off to kind of explore yourself as well. And I feel like whatever you were exploring together or about one another, there was something that felt deflating, you know, like, you know, just like the air was um taken out of it. But yeah. Oh, wow. Trans transformation the cicada transition and liberation what did i say i literally said a tormenting transitional energy because of the truth of feelings and the truth is there was love at first sight but this transition now feels tormenting and i feel like 
you know, and, and, and also if there's a different timeline, as much as you might not recognize it, when you're going through your own torment, they're picking it up from you and they might see that as you like hating on them. And at times you might do. And now that they're tormented, you might sense that as like, oh, I just want to get away from it. Or they, you know, because I've already gone through it. But there is a sense of that energy reaching out, brand, like like as they branch out into something new and as they reach out to kind of break through the clouds of confusion and this dark night of the soul, of course they're going to reach out to you because they're shedding, they're shedding uh, an aspect of themselves and their identity that is very much entwined with their experience with you. And you're going to be like, oh, you know, I don't want any part of that. But imagine what they felt like when you were reaching out to them, if it was that way around energetically or physically depending on how you did it that would have felt like Ugh, that's too much or that's too dark or that's too full on I feel like that's that little bit of that like ah yes I get it and now on the bottom of the deck we've got ten of crystals which is what we've got here with the crocodile stability and attainment in in many ways I also feel like as much as that can talk about like a more stable, established um, foundation and life with a person, not just happy families, but really growing something together and building something together like an empire. I also feel like this is highlighting that to be on stable ground independently, both, both of you had to go through this emotional shift in terms of what you're afraid of because hidden behind that, which I haven't shown yet to power one and two is the raccoon and that's again it's like am I going to be accepted can I show up as I really am and that did come through in pal two but I, I don't think either of you want another person that is going to physically you know maybe practically maybe financially maybe mentally maybe emotionally maybe energetically whether you realize it or not you've both been like I don't want to be dragged down or pulled under Mm. so I'm going to start telling you now this final message is the gift the gift that you recognize through some kind of love at first sight that recognition or that sense of you're the one or just I know you or this is meant to happen you were grateful for it at the beginning and then you lost sight of it but now part of what you can take as a gift moving forwards regardless of how this pans out and I think this person's intention is to liberate themselves from their old ways in the way that you have like 97 98 99 percent of it you've liberated yourself from because you're on the right path so you're doing well in working with spirit and your higher self and staying in balance and being grateful for the lessons you are doing well and I do feel like this person wants to liberate themselves from you know repeating the same mistakes and going through the same problems and also liberate themselves from this dark night of the soul and feel like they can come back to life again but they have to be able to receive the truth of again how they behave towards you and how they took things that you might have said and done maybe without clarifying without communicating effectively but I feel like the gift you can carry forward to both of you is you're meant to learn how to show mercy forgiveness and grace and you have to give that to yourself right you have to be merciful to yourself when you're tormented and struggling you have to forgive yourself for mistakes and for hurting other people including one another and you have to learn to move through life with grace and with gratitude in order to appreciate that in another person but I feel like there is a chance to show each other this. I just don't know. You know, it's like, I don't know how much time that has already taken or could take. I don't know. I think it could be successful in offering each other that. Wow. Lovers. 
I think it could be successful in offering each other that, but I'm going to say, I'm going to put arrow there and I'm going to put the temporary problem is whatever, actually, I probably, yeah, the temporary problem that this person I think might still be working out is that they're not very receptive. Maybe this person's not receptive to criticism, but, may, but maybe you also need to recognise that whether you think you criticise them or not, you did. Um, yeah. But also, I don't feel like this person was very forthcoming, you know? Whether that's communication or just clarifying something that you might have asked them or telling you how they feel or showing you, you know, they might have been quite, you know, matter of fact and chatty but not very expressive in terms of you're attractive or you know I'm really drawn to you or whatever so you've already learned a lot from this both of you mm, that's where I feel like um because I because I, I feel like that is like spiritual discernment and I feel like that's where you are right but as much as we've got like this eagle here and I feel like all these birds are tied together that there's a there's a little bit more truth that you kind of need to just pick at to really see to bring in that kind of alignment and alchemy uh integration sorry and it might sting you know it might sting a little bit to see something extra about yourself that you hadn't seen before but for the most part, I feel like that's over here. Part of this liberation is this person facing some home truths I just heard. Yeah, because the Nine of Pentacles, I feel like that's more that's more the energy that you're already in. I remember we got the Ten of Pentacles on the bottom of this deck. So, you know, in order to kind of have that independently or with one another or with future people, both people have to be able to get into the nine of pentacles, just like to have the ten of, you know, cups, you both have to be able to get into the nine of cups in this integrated energy within. And I feel like you're more here, but there's a bit of a halo here. And again, you know, it, it feels like maybe being put on a pedestal and someone not feeling like they measure up or you thinking, oh, I've got to a space now where I understand this and I've learnt lessons and I'm grateful even though it's been tormenting, but there's still a resistance to what this person did or didn't do or said or didn't say and the energy that you might still pick up on them and what might happen next because part of what you're still not wanting to see is that this collaborative energy, it's that last little bit, right? chariot yeah that this truth is essential for this person to move forwards in balance and yeah they have to have liberated themselves from well no they're liberating themselves from this dark night of the soul but i think there's a desire that there's enough truth and enough clarity and enough drive behind this person now to push them to go through this transformation even though it's tormenting they want to liberate themselves from the imbalance and from maybe some kind of injustice. But I still feel like that spiritual discernment, there's still problems to overcome around this truth and these home truths before a person can move forwards. And they, they can't move forward unless they've let go of that old identity where, you know, they can almost like avoid opening up I just heard avoid opening up yeah but it, it might feel like it's a really tricky position at the moment like I say if a person starts to go under not because of another person physically dragging them under but because of their own shit then they can no longer criticize the other person for saying you're dragging me down what you say or do is dragging me down how you criticize or judge me is dragging me down your energy is dragging me down. They can no longer do that. They have to face facts, which is, this is something within myself. And remember those circles with the ripples? 
like the, the circle with the circles and then the overlapping circles and the heart upside down and the right way up and then broken and then overlapping. That's like the circle with the ripples in the middle. That's that inner work where this person can move forwards now by just clutching at straws or, you know, reaching out to the wrong energy that's going to take them further under. They have to deal with themselves in the same way that I feel like you had to. And look at what we've got. We've got the world on the bottom of the deck. And we've also got justice. I also feel like this person might be able to bring justice to you and to this situation. But only by liberating themselves from an old identity and an old way of interacting and opening themselves up. But you're only going to be able to receive that with that mercy, forgiveness and grace. However you move forwards and gratitude. If you recognise the lack of collaboration on your part in the in the past, even if it's just that little way that you somehow criticised and judged them that might have given them the wrong end of the stick about you. Or you might have got the wrong end of the stick about them and judged them harshly based on that. That's the way that you you prepare yourself to receive justice. That's how you prepare yourself to be open to someone coming in to wrap up a cycle with you. Actually, yeah, I, I really feel like you're both very sensitive souls and I feel like you've both been very, very troubled by this uh, dynamic connection, relationship, interactions, what's been said and done, what's not been said and done. And I feel like although there was all this hope at the beginning where it felt like you were really, you came in like a gift for one another and it, you felt grateful and maybe there was that love at first sight. I feel like you both lost hope and lost faith and, and, and started to misunderstand one another. So don't forget the prize draw. And if this was helpful, please do like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.